Want to sleep in and still have a great day at Epcot? Of course you do. Today is no rope drop here at Epcot. Hey everybody, it's Molly with Man with Club, and today I am rounding out our afternoon in the park series. Lots of people want to sleep in on vacation, and I'm showing you the best way to tackle these Disney parks if you don't rope drop. Today, I didn't get into the park until after one. I didn't buy Genie Plus. We are going to luxuriate, friends. I'm going to share some tips, tricks on how you can have the best afternoon ever in Epcot. Let's get to it. If you're new to this series, this is the series where we do not rope drop. We don't get up early, friends. We luxuriate and relax and come into the parks in the afternoon. There is so much to do at these parks. They're very busy right now. GD Plus is confusing. So is it even possible to come in in the afternoon and still have a great day at the Disney parks? Like I said, Epcot is the fourth of the parks that we're doing this in. This is also probably the one that most of you want to come in later. I totally get it. Epcot's the park that most people hop into later in the day. They enjoy some festivals, some eating, some drinking, some harmonia. So today we're gonna spend a few hours here in the afternoon and try to have the best afternoon ever. And I'm not gonna lie to you friends, it's in the 60s today, so we're already off to a great start. We're gonna kick things off with a little spin back in time. That's right, we're going on Spaceship Earth. It's got a five minute wait. What a perfect way to kick this off. The good and bad thing about Epcot is that most of the attractions are in the front of the park which means if you're coming in in the afternoon, people that rope drops are already done with them and they're probably back in World Showcase eating and drinking. So typically speaking, most of the not future world rides get long lines first thing in the morning before World Showcase opens. And then a lot of them tend to drop to very manageable in the mid afternoon through the early afternoon. And then they'll sometimes bump back up in the evening as people come in to have dinner. So coming in at one, two o'clock, I'm seeing very low weights at Spaceship Birth, at the Seas, Living with the Land, Journey into Imagination with Figment, even Mission Space. The attractions you have to worry about in this park are Revy's Ride to Adventure, Frozen Ever After, Test Track, and of course, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, but we'll get to that one in a minute. Bubblegum wall self taken, a requirement anytime I get off the attraction. And now we're headed to Guardians of the Galaxy. In this park, the attractions you have to worry about getting on and make a plan for are Remy's Ride to Adventure, Test Track, Frozen Ever After, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, and a little bit Soren, but not really as much as the others. If you're not concerned with some of those attractions, I don't think you need to buy Genie Plus in this park the way you do at the other parks. So I did not buy Genie Plus today. In the other afternoon videos, I've bought Genie Plus and stacked afternoons to come into the park with a bunch of lightning lanes. You can go check those out at Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. And you could do that here as well if Remy or Frozen or Test Track were really important to you. For me, I don't think they're part of a best afternoon ever. I like all of those attractions to various levels. But if you want to save money and not purchase Genie Plus one day, I think this park and Animal Kingdom are the ones that you can most likely go without it. If those attractions are important to you, again, Test Track, Remy, Frozen, you could make a plan to get those done without paying for Genie Plus. I do think you'd have to rope drop at that point and go rope drop one of them, use Single Rider at Test Track, and then scurry over to the other one as well. But I'm not including them in Best Afternoon Ever because I think the main reason most people come to Epcot is to luxuriate, to relax, to eat and drink, enjoy the festivals, enjoy some good food. All that said, I did purchase a fancy ride for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Now, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, there's only two ways to get on this attraction. You can either join a virtual queue, which is free, or you can purchase it as a fancy ride, which is an individual per person cost, and it varies day by day. Today, it was $15. And the reason I chose to purchase it rather than do the virtual queue is because I could pick exactly what time I wanted to ride the attraction. As a little reminder, the virtual queue opens up at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. At 7 a.m. you have to have an Epcot Park reservation, but you don't have to be here. At 1 p.m. you have to be inside the park. 
To join the virtual queue, you will need to hit join queue exactly at 7 a.m. I recommend having a world clock counting down and then at 6.59.59 clicking refresh, clicking join queue, and hopefully you'll get a spot. The downfall of the virtual queue is that you do not know what time you're riding. If you successfully join the virtual queue, you will be given a boarding group and then those boarding groups are called back throughout the day and you're given an hour window to come back and ride. So I didn't want to run the risk, considering this is an afternoon video, of joining at 7 a.m. and getting an early boarding group and getting called back before the afternoon. I also didn't want to do the 1 p.m. virtual queue because by that point, all of the return times are going to be much later, pushing it into the evening. Because by the evening, most people are in World Showcase, they're eating, they're drinking, they're getting ready for Harmonious, and it's kind of a hike to get all the way back up here to Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind in World Discovery. So I did pay for it, but I was able to choose what time I wanted to come. I knew roughly when I'd be getting into the park and that way I could knock it out at the beginning of my day. I do know that when you start adding up the cost of Genie Plus and Lightning Lanes for more than just one person, it's obviously much more of a hassle, but it is nice to guarantee a time you can ride. Now, as one more friendly reminder, with fancy rides, you can book them at 7 a.m. if you are a Disney World resort guest. You can book them at the time the park opens when you are not a resort guest. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind does tend to sell out throughout the day, but not as quickly as Rise of the Resistance. So I've never had a problem as a not resort guest having one available uh, when the park opens at 8.30. The other downfall besides the cost of purchasing a Lightning Lane is that you do bypass the majority of the queue. So if you haven't been on this attraction yet, I do recommend doing the virtual queue. Uh, because there are some cool Easter eggs and details you can look for. I outlined them in a secrets videos I did, but today I wanted to lock in an afternoon time, so that's what I did. Your world and ours were born of the same moment, one which you refer to as the Big Bang. As such, we are all galactic neighbors in a vast universe which we and countless others share. What you see before me is the cosmic generator. And in just a few moments, we'll be activating it so you can experience it for yourself. I've been watching Terrans for the arms. That's not pretty at all. This species has failed. Are you sure you can control it? Come on, it's me. We got this. We're all toast. First it was cake, now there is toast. This plan is making me so hungry. Nothing to worry about. Unless we cannot stop this unusually large man. Then you're likely doomed. Come on! What have we done? I think we're jumping back. Oh. Woo! Gosh, that ride is just so much fun. For sure my favorite ride in this park. What a delightful attraction. I got September, by the way. And now that we've ridden Guardians, that's the last of our like appointments for the day. So we are headed to the other half of Not Future World, World Nature. I'd like to knock out a ride or two over there. And then I'm gonna spend the rest of the afternoon eating and drinking in World Showcase like I was meant to do. In fact, eating and drinking in World Showcase is my favorite ride in Epcot. I am gonna bypass the seas. I'll give my pal Mr. Eel a, a long distance wave because I noticed on the tip board that Soren had a 25 minute wait. It had 45 when I came into the park, so I'm gonna go ahead into the land instead. The land pavilion, home to living with the land, which kind of has a long line right now, 20 minutes, but it'll drop, especially later if you wanna try it. You've got Awesome Planet, a movie that will make you feel terrible. Garden Garrel, the spinning restaurant with Mickey, Chippendale, and Pluto. Sunshine Seasons, which is a quick service. But of course, we are here for the star of the show, soaring around the world. Soarin' Around the World varies on its weight a lot more than other popular rides like Frozen Ever After and Remy's Ride to the Adventure. Remy and Frozen tend to get up over an hour and stay there for 90% of the day. So if you're not doing Genie Plus for those, you're gonna want to rope drop or skip Harmonious to get in line last thing. Soarin', on the other hand, will 
Oh, there's a single rider entrance for Soren. Color me surprised. Here we go. All right. Even better. They said they're uh, testing it out and they may sporadically do single rider at Soren. I'll take it. Anyway, Soren will ebb and flow quite a bit. It was 15 minutes at one point today. It's uh, 25 now. And earlier today when I walked in, it was 45. So Soren can get a long line, especially on a really busy day. So then it's a good one to use Genie Plus on. But if you're not buying Genie Plus, you can probably get on Soren with a 30 minute wait or less, especially in the afternoon. Soren is that delightful hand glider inspired attraction where you soar around the world and see monuments from all over the place. It has a 40 inch height requirement and it is most likely your mom's favorite attraction. Or if you're a mom, it's probably your favorite attraction because it is the most relaxing, calming, and luxuriating attraction probably of all time. And if I know anything about moms, it's that they love to relax and luxuriate, but they probably don't ever get to. Thank you. On the right hand side. Thank you. Now, much like other single rider attractions, it means that you will probably get on the ride faster, but you are going to just fill in odd numbered seats. So you'll be split up from your party. If you're with a big group, you probably don't want to do this because it could result in you guys being in completely different theaters. But if you're a smaller party or you want to go again or you're solo and it's open, what a perk. About 10 minutes later and I am at the pre-show for Soren. So it certainly took, was a little bit faster than the standby line, but not as fast as some other single riders that you're filling in continuously moving ride vehicles. But still, interesting to see if they keep it around. We'll begin boarding in a few minutes, but first I'd like to acquaint you with some important safety information. Store all carry-on items in the underseat compartment. This includes cameras, purses, hats, and of course, these little beauties. So luxuriating, perfect for this kind of day. Now at this point, you could keep on riding attractions up here if there's more you have checked off yet that you'd like to do. Living with the land, the seas with Nemo and friends, journey into imagination with Figment, and Spaceship Earth. Those all have very short queues right now. Afternoon is great this part because of how low a lot of these lines get. But I am getting hungry. Got a rumbly in my tumbly. It's time for our first feeding, our first snack, our first drink break. There's also something I want to check out in the World Showcase, and it's going to start soon. So we are off. The thing about Epcot is there's so much to eat and drink. It's not just my favorite thing to do here. I think it's a lot of people's favorite thing to do here. Let me know in the comments. And the hardest part about Epcot is deciding what to eat and drink. We're going to get some snacks and drinks throughout this video. I'm going to try and show different ones that I haven't yet on the channel. So I have so many favorites and there's so many good things that I like to mix up what I'm advertising. And the first stop, the home of Moiro's. I hope you'll join me for a delicious and luxurious beverage here in Canada. One of my favorite things about Epcot and the World Showcase is just how beautiful it is. I love just slowly strolling the countries and exploring and looking at all the details and the flowers and the landscape, uh, eating and drinking my way through. So. Cheers to Canada. This is the Fin de Mont. It is one of my favorite beers in all of World Showcase. It's a French Canadian wheat beer. It's similar to like a Blue Moon, but it's much, much better, much more delicious in my opinion. Cheers. 
Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's got those fruity notes, that nice weediness. It's a little bit heavier than a domestic beer, um, a domestic light beer, but they also have the moose head here, which I really much enjoy as well if you're looking for something a little bit similar um, to an American style lager, but a little bit more punch. But I love Le Fin de Mont. I think it's delicious. In the interest of mixing things up, I decided to show this one off today as opposed to grabbing a pint at the pub, which is my other favorite place to get beer in the park. And it just so happens our next activity is right next door, still in Canada. You may know I love live entertainment in a theme park. It's one of my favoritest things. I don't think there's much better than a nice beverage or a snack and some great live music. We're gonna watch Alberta Bound. That is the current band performing in Canada throughout the day and enjoy the spin demo. We arrived in December and London was cold. We stayed in the bars along Tearing Cross Road. We never saw nothing. quite enjoyed that. I really enjoy any live entertainment in the theme parks, but I really enjoy a live band. There's also a live band here in the UK, but they only perform on, uh, I think Friday, Saturday, Sundays right now, maybe Thursdays as well. Mariachi Cobre is performing in Mexico. You've got the Voices of Liberty and the American Adventure. You can find the times for any of these performers in the app, but I really just enjoy relaxing and enjoying some live musicians. But. I'm now hungry, so we are headed to one of my favorite underrated places to eat, and it's probably not in the country you're expecting me to eat in. That's right, I bypassed France, my favorite country to eat in, because you've got the bakery with all those cheesy delights, you've got the ice cream shop, but I'm headed to Morocco to eat at, again, one of the most underrated places in all of Walt Disney World, somewhere you can sit and relax and lounge and luxuriate, and with the weather being so beautiful as it is today, an outdoor patio sounded divine. Welcome to Spice Road Table. This is one of my favorite places to just come sit and have a snack, have a drink, and relax. It is definitely underrated as they are a Moroccan and Mediterranean small plates restaurant. I feel like a lot of people don't know what that food entails, so it's really easy to get a reservation here, or I just want the walk-up wait list on the app um, and I was called back within just a few minutes so it's a great place to come to if you don't have a reservation taking a look at the menu they do have a lot of small plates that's kind of what they're known for like I was saying so they've got their hummus fries which they're known for crispy cauliflower calamari lamb kefta non spread shrimp um, I cannot pronounce this tiropidakia I'm so sorry um, but that's similar to spanakopita but uh, with a little bit of a twist on it. Dolmas, which are marinated um, olives and rice and herbs inside grape leaves. They've got some chicken. They do a sampler platter, a dessert platter, and then they have a lot of different beverages, including sangria, which is fabulous, and they have a full bar. So you can get to go drinks here, or you can sit here and have a fabulous lagoon side snack cocktail meal. My fabulous eats and drinks are here. So first things first, these are the hummus fries. These are made in house. Basically they freeze hummus and then they fry it. It's got a uh, citrus chipotle and preserved lemon on there. There's dipping sauce. They are phenomenal. I also did get the tiro petechia. I'm just gonna say it fast and uh, hope it's close. I'm so sorry. Uh, but this is phyllo dough with cheese inside of it and then it's got a fresh tomato and cucumber relish on top. And then last but not least, I got this signature iced mint tea. So mint tea is one of the things they're known for here at Spice Road. You can get it iced, you can get it hot, you can get alcoholic concoctions made out of it, various cocktails, uh, but this is just the straight up iced mint tea. And here is our first snack in Epcot. Starting with the hummus fry. We love a dipping sauce. Mm. Strong taste of garlic, strong taste of red pepper, strong taste of paprika. I love the dusting of the lemon on top of it, a little bit of heat in the aioli. If you're a hummus fan, these are so fun and uh, something a little bit more unique and different, but I think pretty approachable because a lot of you like hummus. A must get. We washed down with the mint tea, which is oh so refreshing. Oh my gosh, wow. It's like real mint, real delicious mint. It doesn't taste like toothpaste or peppermint or anything. It tastes like real mint. Um, got that iced tea flavor. Not super duper sweet, but absolutely delicious. And then, of course, our cheesy dish. Mm. 
It's a nice, light, mild cheese. You've got that crispy, flaky phyllo dough, the fresh relish on top. I think they're phenomenal. These are very, very mild as far as flavor goes. I know a lot of people aren't sure what Moroccan food is, what entertaining food is. It's a little too adventurous for some people, but these are very, very approachable. So what I love about this restaurant is it can get as adventurous as you like, but you've also got staples here. Like if you like cheese, you'll enjoy this. Those are so good. Honestly, flavor-wise, they remind me of the cheese empanadas in Mexico that I had during the cheese throwdown video. Check that one out. But I love Spice Our Table. I think it's underrated. I think it's fabulous. And who doesn't want to sit on Friendship Lagoon and just enjoy themselves while in Epcot? Got a hot mint tea to go. I love when I can drink hot beverages in the parks. And going to go do a little exploring. In my opinion, Morocco is one of the most beautiful pavilions. And there's often plenty of places to kind of sneak away from people and get a private moment, take a good picture. So let's take a little lap around Morocco before we continue on a World Showcase. I mean, is this not just beautiful? There's also a little marketplace back here where you can do some shopping. They also do sangria such. You could sit back here and have a sangria in the Moroccan market. But my favorite spot is right back here with this beautiful tile work and this little fountain. This is an awesome place to come get a drink and bring it back here, get a snack and bring it back here from a festival booth nearby. Just come back and relax, get away from the crowds, get away from other people, have your tea, take a selfie and just enjoy. I also love the Fez house, which has this beautiful tile work. It's got an open ceiling right here. Another great place to take some pictures and just enjoy being in a world showcase. I truly think this pavilion is so beautiful, probably the most beautiful, which may be because it's the only pavilion that actually had royalty from that country influence the design. The Moroccan uh, royal family actually sent over craftsmen from Morocco to help build this because they wanted to make sure that they were portraying the best look they could to a Western audience. And I think it shows. I think this pavilion is absolutely gorgeous. Just look at the tile work like on this fountain. Absolutely stunning. I love popping around Morocco. Now we had some delicious eats and a warm beverage in Morocco. We had a tasty beer in Canada. I think it's time for a dessert. And we are headed to Germany, all the way to Germany to get it. To get to our stop in Germany, we're going to have to walk all the way through Japan the American Adventure, and Italy. But what I love so much about Epcot, more so than any of the other parks, is that it's really a choose-your-own-adventure tale. I'm showcasing a few eats and drinks and desserts and treats that I enjoy, but there's so many to choose from. If Spice Road Table didn't seem like your jam, but you still want to eat outside, maybe check out La Quintana de San Angel in Mexico or the Regal Eagle in the American Adventure. If La Fin de Monde didn't excite you in Canada as a beer offering, of course, you could get a beer at the pub like I love doing in the UK or perhaps in Germany. And if dessert in Germany doesn't tickle your fancy, then perhaps you could go to the bakery in France or the ice cream shop in France. You could get the maple popcorn in Canada. You could get Kakigori, the shaved ice in Japan. I just love that Epcot has so much to offer as far as food and drink goes, especially when you add in the festivals that it's really just up to your personal preference. On the way to our treat though, I always like stopping and enjoying the model trains in Germany. It's one of my favorite little world showcase details, partly because I know Walt Disney would love it. He absolutely adored trains and partly just because it reminds me of my family who had some model trains around their Christmas decorations. And I just think it's so cute. I posted on our Instagram today in a kind of come along with me section, what you like doing in Epcot. And a lot of people said watching the model trains or having to drink and watching their kids watch the model trains. So I think it's just a special memory that a lot of people have and it's simple, but a lot of people enjoy it. Made it to Germany and about to go grab my snack, my dessert. Some of you may have thought I'm going to the caramel shop, which would be a great choice. They've got a lot of delicious eats and treats and caramel couche the caramel shop, but I'm actually going to a lesser known treat that I think is fabulous. And I mobile ordered it here at Summerfest. This is also where you can get several German beers as well as a bratwurst. And I highly recommend visiting Summerfest because it has the same beers as the beer carts out front, but you can mobile order and skip the line. Here it is, my dessert for the day. We have the pretzel bread pudding from Summerfest. So this is pretzel bread pudding, meaning they made bread pudding out of German pretzels and then they topped it with caramel and vanilla sauce. Um, yum. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It is so 
good. It's definitely a sweet dessert. Obviously, it's dessert. It's covered in caramel and vanilla, but that's the sweetest part. The bread pudding itself is perfectly balanced. It's nice and dense. It's nice and moist. I'm sorry I said moist, um, but it's got a little bit of saltiness actually to it because it's made out of a pretzel. It's nice and doughy. Oh my gosh, it is so, so good. And like I said, I think this is an underrated treat when you talk about things like the caramel shop, the French bakery, all those delicious things, which you absolutely can enjoy as well. But just wanted to share one of my favorites, my newer favorites. This isn't, uh, hasn't been around for too long. And it's an absolutely fabulous dessert you can get here in Germany. Now afternoon is almost over, but I think we've got time for one more ride as we wrap our lap around World Showcase. Unfortunately, Frozen Ever After is closed right now for technical issues, but I wasn't going to wait in a 75 minute line anyway, and I love to party with Plant Donald. I mean, regular Donald and the rest of the three Caballeros. So we're headed to Mexico. Like I was saying earlier, I really feel like the majority of attractions here at Epcot don't need Lightning Lane or Genie Plus. You can bypass most of the lines without waiting too long on almost every day. If you do really want to ride Remy's Ride at Sweet Adventure or Frozen Ever After, you could consider buying Genie Plus, especially if you're only coming in Epcot in the afternoon. You could stack those Lightning Lanes for the afternoon. I explained how to do that in the Holly Studios and the Magic Kingdom version of these videos. Or if you still don't want to purchase Genie Plus, I do recommend rope dropping, especially as a resort guest for that 30 minutes extra and going to either one of those first thing to avoid the long lines. And I really do enjoy both of those attractions quite a bit. I think those are great family attractions, but I think most people come to Epcot to eat, drink, to enjoy a festival, to relax, and most of the rides here allow you to do just that without long lines. Headed inside the Mexico Pyramid. Inside here, you'll find Senanhel Inn Restaurante, a sit-down restaurant, the market with various goodies, the Cava del Tequila, the Tequila Bar, and Grand Fiesta Tour, a family-friendly boat ride featuring the three caballeros. Grand Fiesta Tour does not have Lightning Lane, but it usually doesn't have too long of a queue, usually 15 minutes or so. If it does have a longer line than that, I personally wouldn't wait for it. It will likely drop throughout the day. And while it's not a must-do if you're trying to just knock out the heavy hitter attractions in Epcot, I think it's really nice. It's quaint. I enjoy the music. And uh, it's just quintessentially Epcot to me because I remember writing it and the predecessor, El Rio de Tiempo, as a child when I came to visit. wonderful afternoon here at Epcot and we had a great time. We had four attractions including some very heavy hitters, had a bunch of delicious eats and snacks and drinks and just luxuriated our way throughout World Showcase and that is what Epcot's all about. At this point in the day the only things that have long lines are the same things I've been talking about the entire time. Grammy's Ride to Adventure, Frozen Ever After, and Test Track. Those are going to be your biggest obstacles when it comes to Epcot so if you're planning on coming in the afternoon you're either going to have to wait in those long lines or consider purchasing Genie Plus and stack those uh, later in the day. Again, I showed you how to do that in those other videos. Otherwise, pretty much everything else in Epcot tends to have lower weight, so you really can have a relaxing day when you come to this park. Especially because for most of us, Epcot is all about eating and drinking. So, if we are going to continue on throughout the evening, I'd head into like have tequila right here, maybe get some fish and chips in the United Kingdom, and then I'd hunker down for my spot in Harmonious. If you want to see an evening version of the series, definitely let us know that in the comments. Let us know your favorite thing to eat or drink in Epcot as well. And until next time, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media. I'm Molly, and it's the magical. Now go watch the Animal Kingdom version of this video. Bye!